Hey guys, my name is Bishoy Khalifa. I got the opportunity to work with Turin 19 during the development cycle and wanted to share with you the project that I worked on, this rising grain statue setup. So let's get into it. In Houdini 19, we have a faster vellum grain solver, and I made some tests to show it off and naturally went with the R&D style videos until Fianna from technical marketing team steered us towards a more artistic approach. She sent this very detailed concept the concept was we want to see four statues rising up, pushing sand piles, and then they start emitting sand. Sort of like a defense mechanism you'd see in an ancient temple or something. Not necessarily on the same scale, but that was the basic idea. So I made some initial tests to determine the speed of the statue rising up, the shape of the piles, the sand behavior, etc. I started with just one statue coming up from a pile that was very flat. We made it way bigger later. I also slowed down the statue after some tests because it was very fast, giving off a completely wrong sense of scale. This also helped determine some parameters for the vellum solver, such as time scale, repulsion settings, etc. In between tests, I experimented with how to fill the whole area with grains. I didn't want the grains to end, uh, or we have the statues in a confined space, like they're in a display or something. This one was the nicest looking one, and I used the same method in the end result. Later, I made the pile much bigger, so there is more sand to be pushed around. Then, for the projectile sand, I had the four statues coming up and spewing sand. It looked kind of like a waterfall at first. We needed it to be more violent. And I didn't like how there were a lot of loose particles flying around. We're going to talk about this later, actually, because this was fixed in Houdini 19 without me even trying, so that's cool. So, after some tests, when I reached something that was close to what we had in mind, then I began working on the final video. So for the ground to make the sand piles, I made a box and give it this sloped look using a simple vop with ramps. And I transformed it around four times, then I projected the boxes onto a height field. I blurred them, I gave them some noise, uh, some distortion so they look more natural or organic. And from here we have multiple outputs. This one, I just transformed it so it rests on the grid and later I used it as a collider for the projectile sand coming out of the statue's mouths. For the sand piles, I converted the height field into polygons. Again, I made it rest on the ground so its minimum centroid in the y-axis is zero. I decided to split the sand pile simulation into four piles and instead of doing the four piles all at once, uh, I decided to sim each pile on its own to maximize the amount of sand I can get out of each pile. So I scattered four tubes, one for each pile, and I used boolean intersection to make four patches and simmed each patch on its own. So patch one, patch two, three, and four, like so. And I filled each patch with grains using a vellum configure grain uh, with a 0.03 for the particle size. And I needed each patch to collide with the ground that we now have, so I made another boolean. But instead of intersecting the tubes with the piles, I subtracted them from each other and output that as the collision geo. So if patch one for the sand pile looks like this, its collision geo looks like this and so on for each patch. So the collider for patch one looks like this, patch two like this, three, four, and so on. Now for the statues we chose this one to work with, I got it off 3dscans.com. It has a decent mouth cavity for the projectile sand to come out of. I give it this simple animation, just coming up from below the sand piles and resting on the ground. I dropped down a trail node to compute its velocity, and I ended up using tenths of the velocity attribute 
I copied it over a few times as well and give it the same transformation values that I gave the boxes. So each statue is under each sand pile. Then I added a time shift node for each copy to vary the animation so they don't all come up at the same time. From there, I merged all four statues. I converted them into VDBs to later act as a collision proxy for the DOP. I cached out the VDBs and now we're ready to uh, simulate the ground sand. We'll come back again to this setup later, but now onto the ground sand DOP. Here we have a basic vellum solver setup with the ground collider as a terrain object, the statues collider, and a simple ground plane for the sand to rest on. I added a pop drag node to give the sand some air resistance. After some tests, I felt like the time scale at 0.7 is the most appropriate for the scale. I gave it just five substeps, didn't need more than that to be honest, and 60 constraint iterations. I went with a friction value of 0.25 for the dynamic scale parameter, so the sand stops quicker. Uh, while testing the sand, I found uh, kept flowing down after the statues come up, and I wanted the sand to stop moving after a while so we can focus on the pile created by the projectile sand coming, down, coming out of the statues' mouths. So 0.25 just did the trick for the friction. In the advanced tab, I didn't change much. Just the repulsion settings I cranked up very high, so there is less bounce on collision, and that's it basically for the ground sand up. In the input folder, I have four file cache nodes, and I'm very lazy. I changed the patches from the switch node manually after each cache. I go and cache the next uh, patch and so on, instead of doing some fancy procedural solution, but hey, it worked. In these two patches, uh, you'd notice I have uh, time shift nodes to hold them at a frame just before the statues start to push them up because the sand was still flowing down and still settling before the statues pushed it and I didn't want it to be distracting. I wanted the sand to be static until the statues uh, acted on it. Now back to the setup. I had to extend the ground sand uh, to fill the whole frame. But I didn't want to sim everything, so I just copied uh, the height field setup over and I made the height field bigger than the one used for simulation to cover the whole frame. Same boolean operation as the collider, but this time all the tubes at once. So I have this shape here, which I then scattered like a few million points on it. So anyway, I merged the extension points with the sand patches. I gave the extension points the same P scale the patches have, and then transformed it down uh, in the Y axis to cover the seams between the dynamic and static points. So you don't know where the dynamic points ended and the static points began. I applied a point jitter to the entire thing to lose the pattern of the height field noise that it had. I ended up multiplying the P scale of the grains by half uh, just before ending uh, because it looked nicer in my opinion. And that's basically it for the ground sand. So back again to the setup for the projectile sand. Here I have the statues we made before. I isolated the mouth cavities. In the beginning, I started testing with just uh, this uh, mouth cavity isolated, uh, but it had like a sheet of grains and I wanted more grains to come out. So I dropped down a poly extrude just to give them some thickness and a vellum configure grain for sourcing, just like I did with the ground. The only difference is I used uh, 0.02 uh, instead of 0.03 because, because I could afford it with the projectile sand. We wanted the sand coming out of the statues to be somewhat violent, as I said, so I added a point velocity node that I animated as the statues rose up to compensate for the height because I wanted the sand to always hit the center. So I started with a value of 15 and at the end keyframe, I put 12, which is the distance between the origin point and each statue, because it's the same value I used for all the transform nodes earlier, so that I'm always sure the sand is hitting uh, the center. I give it some animated curl noise as well, just to break the velocity up. Then I added this triangle right here. This does <laughs> absolutely nothing. 
it just stores the emission frames for me to use later so i don't have to manually adjust it in a top every time i make a change in animation because every time i change the animation i had to go back in the top and change when each statue uh, will spew sand according to their position at the time so not the cleanest solution as well but it worked I uh, copied that over four times as before with different start frame for each statue according to the time they rise up from the pile and now it was ready to go to the top so in the projectile sand top I have the same setup as before with four sources instead of one, one for each statue with the activation parameter linked with each triangle for the start frame and here I have a height field as train object for the collision I have some drag as well, but not as much as in the ground sand drop because too much drag took away from the violence of the sand. Same time scale and sub steps as before. The only difference is I enabled auto sleep. So the particles that aren't moving are not solved anymore. So I cut down on the same time. And I wanted the sand to be clumpy as well, not uh, fine sand like the ground. So I added some attraction and that did the trick. And that's it basically for the projectile sand up, I cached it out. After caching, I also ended up multiplying p-scale by half, uh, just like I did for the ground sand. I cached everything in Houdini 18.5 and once again in Houdini 19. And the differences in same time was actually mind-blowing. Especially for the projectile sand, it was like a three-hour difference. I don't know what sort of magic they practice at side effects, but the speed difference is really amazing. What I also noticed the first time I sent the projectile sand in Houdini 19 is there were no more loose particles. Uh, the result looked uh, very clean as opposed to the Houdini 18 one. I guess these were because the five sub steps weren't enough to handle the speed or maybe it was because the constraint iterations, but I used the same settings in both Houdini 18.5 and in 19. And uh, in Houdini 19, the result was much cleaner. So. It turns out it's because of this new feature called spatial sorting. Basically, it sorts the points every 20 frames by default, so the neighboring points will be close in memory. This makes for better cache performance, but it also means that all of the neighbor points in a search area, by default 2.5, are returned to the closest points. As opposed to Houdini 18.5, where it defaulted to max of 20 neighbors, Houdini 19 actually returns all of the neighboring points. You can actually increase max neighbors in Houdini 18.5 for the same result, but of course, then it would be even slower. So that's an awesome feature because it made my sim look way cleaner with basically zero effort on my part. So kudos to SideFX team for doing this. So back to the setup. Now that I had everything cached and ready to go, I added some mood lighting. I added a light blocker that looks like this. So it feels like we're below surface, like in a dungeon or a buried temple or something. And that's it, I just hit render. So that's it, not a complicated setup really, it's very simple, but I like the results very much. So thank you guys for watching, and thank you to SideFX for constantly raising the bar every year. Goodbye.